This is Jennifer at Clockworks and today we're going to install a set of our 10 inch clip hanger handlebars on this 2015 Rogue Glide. Let's get started. For the Clockworks clip hanger handlebars, this portion of the handlebar will be facing forward or away from you. Um, the bars automatically have pullback because of the bend in the handlebar, but you can also choose um, what kind of wrist position you're going to have um, on the handlebar itself by how you install the, the knuckle portion or the clamp portion of the handlebar. You can see how the small bore has an angle to it. So if you angle it down, it's automatically going to bring your hand down and then as you rotate it'll actually bring it down further, much like almost like a buckhorn style handlebar. If you like a flatter wrist position, you want the small bore facing up and as you can see it's a much flatter wrist position. So even as you pull it back, um, your wrist will remain straight rather than down like it is on the bottom there. Do you see the difference in the two wrist positions? So the first thing we need to do is remove the stock handlebars and uh, what we're going to do first is take the um, clutch system and the brake system off of the handlebar. So we're going to loosen the switch housings first. the two screws that are behind the switch housings. And on these new bikes, there's a little information switch back here, and we have to take that button off before you can actually get the back half of the switch housing off of there. It's just a couple of plastic tabs, so be careful, but you'll have to get underneath there to pop it off. and then I'll just slide off like that. Now we can take the master cylinder loose. As you can see, I've put a fuel cover on here to protect, protect the painted surfaces, so I can just lay the master cylinder right on top, so none of the fluid leaks out through the cover, and the console and the tank are protected. cover comes off and then there's a little plastic strap, ratcheting strap that holds the switch assembly together. So you have to get underneath there and pop it loose and then the switches will come off with a handlebar. They also have a little quick connector at the top. So if you want to take the entire switch assembly out, just release it there and set it aside. And then if you're reusing your stock grips, uh, you have to be kind of gentle because they're glued onto the handlebar. So um, you can sometimes put a screwdriver underneath or squirt a little brake clean in there and it'll break the glue loose and then you can take it off of the end of the handlebar. Now that we have the clutch side removed, we'll repeat the same process on the brake side.
The next step is going to be to remove the, the ignition switch knob and the gauge cluster so that we can remove the handlebars assembly and the wiring. So to remove the uh, ignition switch knob, there's a, there's a spring uh, button underneath on the left side, so you can stick your finger under there and feel it. Um, and what you want to do is put your key in the unlock position, push up on the spring clip, turn the key past unlock, and the knob will come out. So you can take the knob and the spring off together. After you remove the ignition switch knob, it's a 7 8 wrench to remove the ignition switch nut on the top. So you'll take the nut and the spacer off, and that'll allow you to take the gauge assembly um, off of the handlebars. So there's two self-tapping screws that hold the gauge assembly on the motorcycle, one on either side. And that will allow the whole gauge cluster to come off. So behind here, the handlebar wiring and the throttle switch wiring are tucked back behind the speedo and the tack. So if you remove this connector behind the gauge assembly, it'll give you a little bit more room to get at those electrical connectors. So there's these three connectors here. One's the, two of them are for the right side handlebar switches, and the other one's for the left, and they'll match the, the connectors that came, um, came off of the switch housings. There's two connectors that are on the underside of the gauge cluster. Um, one of them has very easily accessible release tab, and that's on the left side. So what I'm going to do is just take that connector off, and then I'm going to rotate the gauge cluster down and out of my way, and just protect the painted surfaces. So now I've got easier access to the handlebar clamp fasteners and to the throttle switch wiring that's down here. Another bonus to the newer bikes is they have um, extra wiring on the throttle connector already, so we won't have to cut and splice anything to make it work. Um, so be, to be able to take the, the throttle switch out of the handlebar, um, you're going to have to disassemble these Molex connector underneath here. So the first thing you want to do is just pop the lock loose. You don't need to take it out. It'll just come loose about that far. You'll hear it click. And you take your special tool. I have a special bent paper clip here. And there's little reliefs um, for each uh, socket head. So you're going to put the paper clip down until you feel a little click. And then you can pull the wire out of the back side. So now we can carefully remove the wires from the handlebars. Just gently guide the wires back through. There's our left side. Just 
I'm going to kind of start the throttle wires and the switch wires together. There's the throttle switch assembly. Now we can remove the handlebars from the handlebar clamp. It's uh, four socket head screws. And be sure to put a hand on the handlebars so they don't fall down against the fuel tank. I'm holding mine with just on my hip here while I loosen up these screws. Now that they're loose, you can just remove all four screws and the clamp and take the handlebars out. The hydraulic lines here have a zip tie that hook it around the riser. So we'll want to um, cut both of those zip ties so we can have a little bit of extra leeway when we're setting, um, setting the master cylinder assemblies back onto the handlebars. stock handlebars and with the clip hanger handlebars you'll notice that there's a hole at the bottom of the bar there's a corresponding peg that's in the riser clamp so you want to line that up when you put the, the handlebars in the clamp then you can reinstall your handlebar clamp So depending upon how you want your knuckles to sit, you want to install the, the left side stub bar, um, it's the one without the notches in it, uh, into the small bore of the knuckle. Okay, so once you have the stub bar installed in the knuckle, you can go ahead and put in the, the three small bore fasteners. And as long as you have the, the slot lined up with the knuckle inside the stub bar there, you can uh, torque these down because that part of the bar won't move. So we'll just snug them up here and then we'll put the, the clamp assembly onto the U-bar. E All right, so once you have the knuckle on the U-bar, um, again, you wanna align the slots. You can see it when you look down through this hole. You can see the, should be able to fit your finger all the way through the pieces there. Um, and that'll, make, that'll ensure that you have enough room to get all the wiring pieces through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put one screw in for now, just to kind of hold it in place while we put the wiring through. There's a, more than one way to, to put wiring in through handlebars. Everybody has their own technique. For me, I would take off this tag. And then I would uh, um, go from the wiring hole down underneath.
And then I just guide the wires through with my finger through the small bore here. And if you need a pick, you might, you might need a pick, but I usually just pull them through like this. That way I've no, I know I've made this bend correctly without chafing anything. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed a cable through here and we'll just pull the wires back down around and plug them right back in where they were. I'm just feeding it up through there. I'm just going to take some tape. Hook them together and then we'll be able to pull the wires right back down through the handlebar. You can guide it by pushing it too, that way you're not pulling on the cable the connector itself. Just unpeep it. Um, we can plug it right back in to where it was. Now we're going to repeat that for the right side and that one's a little bit trickier because of the throttle sensor, but we'll show you how to do it. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to slide this one onto the handlebar and hold it in place with one of the screws. Make sure you get your wiring holes lined up. First I'm going to thread the throttle wires through the handlebar and make the corner and pull the wires out of the top like I did on the other side and then I'll get the switch housing wires through. through the wiring hole. That one. So now we can seat both the switch housing wiring and the throttle housing wiring where they need to be. And then we'll pull the wires through like we did on the other side with the cable. sometimes but it does actually fit through the wiring hole. And just make sure you've got your throttle sensor indexed the right way. So there's three different tab sizes. Feed the cable through the handlebar again on the other side. No 
and we'll guide the wires back down through the U bar. go here the single place one goes in the middle and then we can put our connector back on the throttle sensor I put the color code on my hand so I knew where the wire colors go when I go back together with it We're going to reassemble all the handlebar components, the um, speedo housing and the ignition switch, and then we'll show you how to torque up the handlebars, set your wrist position, and um, adhere the chrome plugs into the end of the handlebars. controls reassembled. You can always do an electronics check before you put the plugs in the end of the handlebar just in case anything went awry. Um, that way it makes it easier to get the wires back out. Um, this is also a good time to set your wrist position. So now that you have all of your controls on there, if you just have a seat on your motorcycle and make sure all three of these are loose, you can, you can put your wrist position wherever you want. So if you have a little longer arm, you're going to want them out straight this way, um, or like our customer is a little bit shorter and he wanted more of a reach style, so we can swing it around this way. There's still plenty of room for the wires to move around. There's no possibility of pinching the wires that way. So once you have your wrist angle set, go ahead and run these bolts in snug here. And when you're torquing these, remember that once you get a good torque on one of them, the other two will be a little loose, so you want to alternate while you're torquing them up. Snug them down kind of in sequence here. And then once you think you're close, you can get your torque wrench out and torque them up to 150 inch pounds. And that'll lock this clamp in place. And should you ever want to change your wrist position, just loosen those three bolts, set it again, and torque them up again. Pretty simple. Since we don't have to change the brake lines on this particular motorcycle, you notice that there's a 90 degree bend in the line. It makes a loop this way. 
If, uh, if you want to change where that angle is sitting on the fit fitting, all you have to do is just barely crack the fitting loose, just enough to change that angle, and then torque it back up. And see, there's no fluid loss, um, so there's no need to re-bleed the system after that. Make sure you get your torque wrench on that and torque it down to 18 foot-pounds before you take it out on a test ride. And then the last thing um, that we're going to do with this is I'm going to show you how to glue in the, the chrome um, bar ends. We supply a, a tube of silicone. It's pretty high-grade silicone, so it holds them in there real well. So that's all we're going to use. And what I do is I just put three, three good little dabs inside the bar. And I take the plug and set it in there. Just give it a little, little bit of a wiggle there, turn it, and push it in. And that way it kind of spreads out the silicone. The only difference on the top plug is I use four little dabs of silicone. Just give it a turn and set it down. You let those sit for about an hour or so, and uh, it should be tacky enough to take her out on a test ride. Um, obviously, you can still adjust your, your levers and controls the way that you do when you change any handlebar. So make it most comfortable for you. And that's the 10-inch clip hanger install on 2015 Road Bike.